Welcome everybody to another episode of Strive Sanctum. My name is Citizen Strife, and this week we're going to do a nice, stupid, lovable show. And that show is How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? And um, I remember seeing this when it first came out like two years ago, give or take. I want to say it was developed by the either the creator, director, the illustrator for the, I think it was Kengan Atra. This like really weird fighting show with a lot of people with a lot of fucking muscles and shit. Um, it looks strange. Very strange. Um, it's one of those super hyper masculine, hyper weird looking things. So I don't know much about it, but apparently this was like a side thing of theirs. Don't quote me on it. Could just be somebody who worked on it. But as far as this show goes, its conceit is that it's an, an infotainment show. And when I talk about infotainment, basically that means it's a show, but in reality it's trying to show you a skill as best it can. It's trying to teach you a skill, get you interested in a skill. It could be a hobby, could be a club game, could be a thing. Really could be just about anything you know and this one pertains to exercise and i got into it because in a former life and even now to an extent i was a fitness instructor and i was a fitness instructor 10 years ago um went to college for it uh exercise science you know for exercise coaching sports stuff like that uh, I had lost weight at the time. Now I'm trying to lose it again. But anyway, um, the thing for me was I spent five or six years doing that before I moved to grad school and then tried my hand at something else and then went into retail. But stuff like working in a nutrition place like GNC, you know, working in a gym was a thing that I did, whether I was teaching yoga, which was my passion, you know, yoga is always going to be my passion, but, you know, lifting weights and doing exercises that make you big and strong, you know, that sort of thing. If that's what you do, then that's what you do. The gym is home to everything. If you want to do cardio, you can do that. The cool thing about this show is it tries to show you different methods, but still keep it simple. Um... Sure, it's for the big, big muscles and doing the thing, but you don't have to. And it actually goes about trying to find different ways of showing you how to work out in the scope of, hey, this is a stupid slice of life show. Let's just have fun with it. What also helps is that the characters and the writing are very good because certain shows have this thing where they're kind of talking down to you like you're stupid rather than okay, we're writing the show because we think we're funny. And even if we think we're funny, we're kind of dumb. This is like, they know this, they know the subject matter they're doing. They know they don't have to try, but they still try so hard that it ends up being funny. And you, re you forget that the actual fitness advice is actually really fucking good. Um, but to get into whatever semblance of a plot there is. Uh, Hibiki Sakura, voiced by Madeline Morris. Uh, Madeline was, uh, or Madeline was in Other Side Picnic, a show I'm going to need to talk about at some point. Because um, Other Side Picnic was really fucking good. I watched that around the same time I rewatched this. And um, Sakura is this, you know, 15-year-old girl with the endless appetite. You've seen those everywhere. She starts gaining weight, even though she doesn't look it she's pudgy i guess but she doesn't like look like completely out of shape but she's the one that doesn't do the exercise she doesn't do this thing and she's eating all the shit so she goes to a gym i think it's silverman gym yeah Silver. i was gonna say gold's gym but that's the actual real place silverman gym and she meets another uh classmate voiced by uh her name is Akemi Soryui, and voiced by Sarah Weidenheft. And 
Uh, Kemi is the class president. She's the super girl. But hidden amongst that is this like crazy neurotic fixation with exercise. You know, those kinds of people the, the she just trembles everywhere. She's like seeing everybody's rippling muscles and all this crazy, <laughs> you know, that sort of crazy. The fact that they're doing it in the guise of the crazy class president who's supposed to be neat and tidy who has everything is is just a great backdrop and they hit it off really well and then eventually you get other characters you get akemi's friend uh ayaka Sa, uh uihara you get gina boyd who's a russian transplant uh rival um you even get a teacher so satomi tachibana who's like me the 25 to 30 well, i'm in my late 30s now but still that sort of like i'm just trying to lose weight because life sucks when you get older and they they tell you that and you forget it you know um so all of them all five of them are either students or transfer students or whatever in the same class or even their teacher they are led by the most awesome guy uh naruzo machio voiced by steven fu and um so Machio's whole thing is he is the super dreamboat guy in a tracksuit. Um, he does the he does the like anime thing where your eyes aren't open most of the time, but he's got that smile on his face all the time. And then you know the thing about him is when he's getting super fucking intense and whatever, he opens up his tracksuit whether he just buffs up and breaks it open or he unzips it and then he becomes fucking. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That's basically it. The super pasty fucking anime boy. You know, nice looking, you know, tall, but thin as a fucking rail. The joke is he becomes Dwayne the Rock Johnson looking guy, you know, and he's just like, muscle, you know, and it's just, it's just, ah, it's so fucking good because it plays into the show's idea. It's, it's, it's them working out. It's them learning how to do fucking dumbbell curls it's them learning how to do uh deadlifts or running up a hill or hiking or doing stuff without uh lifting weights at all like if you're stuck at home or you're stuck in a hotel room and they don't have a gym how do you get a workout you take a chair and you do dips or you walk up and down the stairs like i started doing stair climbing because i watched this show last month and holy fucking crap stair climbing is no joke so i've just st- 10 minutes or 15 minutes i'm hopefully gonna work up to like 20 or 30 i just walk up and down my apartment stairwell and i'm just like oh god this okay yeah that's some fucking cardio so they contrive these stupid stupid things where they give you excuses to like pepper in these these things but the cool thing about all this little knowledge that they give you is it's very accurate to current day standards and again i've been out of the fitness realm for 10 years but a lot of the standards on like what is the proper form for a squat well don't turn your feet inwards don't turn your feet outwards you got to stay kind of 90 90 or if you're going to turn them out you got to have your knees in line because otherwise your shins and your you know quads and all your stuff get fucked you know, or your hips give out or your neck gives out. If you look down, you know, little things that you wouldn't think an anime would teach you about proper form on a, on a machine or just a basic exercise. And then how many reps you do, what type of reps you do, because there's different types of exercises. It's, you know, you're exercising for endurance or you're exercising for strength, you know, or size there are all different mechanisms and all different types of muscle fibers in your body and this show is giving you these little tips on things is everything in fitness gonna work for everybody no but it's nice that in the scope of this stupid show with a beach episode a hiking episode a school festival episode all that basic dumb shit you get in a normal show a rivalry with a new girl you don't know. Your your friend is this super amazing boxer girl that you never knew. You know, they're contriving ways to show you cool shit about fitness. And because I was a fitness instructor, and I'm seeing that all of these little tips, because they, 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 they can't do everything. This isn't just, hey, it's an infomercial about, hey, let's do a 30-minute show about boxing. No, this is like... 10 or 
10 or 12 minutes of them being stupid, talking about things, but giving you like little hints. So once they're done talking stupid shit, they'll give you the hint. Then they'll show you like a screenshot of, hey, here's the machine in question. Here's the exercise in question. Let's fucking go, dude. And then they, they do it. They'll show it to you. At the end of the episode, after the ending happens, they'll even throw in the thing one of the things they were talking about in the show, and then they'll ask you as a viewer to do the thing and then throw those little hints in there. So it's this very infectious, amazing, cool thing. And I, uh, again, I don't think it would work as well if the writing was, we're telling you this and this is how you do it. And this, you know, because a lot of shows rely on kind of talking down to you rather than, these people are fucking around and having a good time and they sound like there are actual people because you would know somebody like Hibiki who's the crazy girl who eats a lot of food you would talk about that you you could see the teacher who's desperate to lose weight or at least to tone up because that happens everywhere you know that sort of thing you have the muscle bound idiots in the gym who are muscle you know that sort of thing but even uh, Machio isn't like super fucking muscle you know he does that as a joke but he knows his whole thing is the way you're supposed to train people everybody has a different strength and weakness everybody has a different interest in a thing so you have to start small and then build and build and build and then you get the joke where Arnold Schwarzenegger, no, not Arnold Schwarzenegger, comes in and is saying, I was the one who trained you, you know, that sort of thing. So they, they do stupid shit like that. So some of the episodes later on, if I had to say was a gripe, was some of those episodes drag on because it's like probably six to eight episodes worth of cool information and cool characters. And then they try to figure out, okay, what's this dumb thing we could do for this next episode? Okay. We'll have a Arnold Schwarzenegger knockoff, do like a Mr. Olympia contest. And Machio is the God of training, you know, in a different episode. And it, 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 it's joke can kind of like ghost stories can kind of overstay its welcome. But at the same time, like if you have like no exercise knowledge, like, absolutely not. You watch an anime, you find out this is an anime show about lifting weights, you can still learn the proper form and the proper function and a lot of the ins and outs of the basics of exercise and fitness and, you know, kind of get inspired by this sort of thing. It's kind of crazy how good the information is and then the characters are infectious enough that you want to take something up because... I've done weightlifting for 15 years. I've done yoga for 15 years, but I never really did stair climbing other than having to do it. But then I felt, okay, at my age, could I do stair climbing as a form to get cardio because I kind of been lacking cardio that day? So, you know, that sort of thing. It feeds into my brain as a fitness nut. As older as I am, because I'm not 27 anymore. I'm 37. So how do I work around things? This still inspires me. And I want another season of this. I want, I mean, they already did a lot of cool shit with this, but I want more. And if they're going to do more of the same, like, pinpoint hints to tell you how to work out, this is good for anyone. This is, like, a good excuse for people to want to work out without, like, being obvious about it. So if you're, like, an anime fan who's kind of dabbled in exercise but don't know what the fuck to do... This is a great excuse to get you motivated because you get the animeness of it all, but you get the proper form. And then you can look this shit up and then say, okay, maybe I could do a, a, a fitness workout out of this. Or maybe I can buy a, a DVD or something or check a fucking app, you know, and you, you get that level of skill. But I can't talk, not talk about the show without talking about the intro because fucking... God, it's one of the best I've ever seen. It's called uh, Onegai Muscle. I'm sure there's a different name for it, but it's just them fucking screaming at you and showing pictures of them doing exercises and then the guy poses and then, ah, that's muscle! Every fucking episode, I wanted to hear that fucking song. It, and then the ending song, while not as good, is still them, you know, muscle! It's just, everything about it is just, I want you amped. I want you amped up. I want you to do this thing. You've heard of like workout music. If that opening song 
as anime and weird as it is, doesn't get you to want to like stand up and work out while the show is going on, it's not doing its job. So if it sounds like I'm recommending this show, it's because I am. It's fucking amazing. And if this inspires you after watching it to watch more anime or to watch a workout DVD or just go out running somewhere or to just pick up a set of weights or pick up a fucking set of cans and just do fucking dumbbell curls with some cans in your fucking cabinet. Whatever the fuck you do. If this inspires you in some way or just me talking shit about it and having fun with it is inspiring in some way, that's the point. This is the best show I've ever seen because this is exactly what for me was what I wanted. Is it my favorite show I've ever watched? No. But for what I was for 10 years to know that a show like this exists and does it so well, I can't recommend this enough. Let's muscle! <laughs> Great. Anyway, um, so yes, after that, what are we doing? So that'll do it for today. So what are we doing next? Shantae. Half genie hero, I love Shantae. I wish I'd I wish I'd played it when it came out, but now that I've dabbled in it, I can say this is a great franchise. So I want to talk about it. Um, the next anime we do is Case Study of Vanitas. Speaking of good shows that I could talk about forever, that's another one. Um, Secret of Evermore. I talked about the toaster dog. I want to talk about the toaster dog. Let me talk about the fucking toaster dog. There's more to the game than the toaster dog, but I want to talk toaster dog. So yes, but. There's also going to be another, like, non-review sort of thing, and that's coming up in February. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the Final Fantasy main villains. And now, bear in mind that I don't have any knowledge of um, 11 and 14, so I'm not going to talk about the NMO um, Final Fantasies. I'm going to be talking about the single-player Final Fantasies. So uh, it could be the final bosses from 1 to f 1 to 10 and whatever M anyone who felt like they were a major part of the story as a main villain i went through the games that i knew and kind of ranked cuz i kind of knew who my bottom 3 were and my top like 4 or 5 were and then i realized as i was ranking them there were some surprises in there and some that like final fantasy fans would sit there and go really the fuck and then I realized I was kind of basing them off of personal preference, how effective they were, how intimidating they were, but also, like, what was their boss battles like? Because if they're the final boss or, like, a mid-boss or, a like, a recurring boss or whatever, you know, how does that weigh into my experience as of that boss or of that game? How effective were they at, at evoking, like, this is a threat? So even if, say, the best, like say, the dirt worst boss motivation, if they, say, had an awesome boss theme or an awesome boss battle or an awesome dungeon, I had to weigh that in effect and say, okay, they didn't have the best, like, storyline or motivation, but the aura that they projected was still really fucking good. So those are things I had to weigh in my head, and I think I've come up with my definitive list of as far as Final Fantasy main villains or, like, the big bads or their subordinates or their recurring baddie minion dudes, this was a definitive list. And that will kind of go into spoiler territory for some of the games that I haven't covered yet. But, again, this was me doing something that's not, like, a review. And I want to do those sorts of things every once in a while. So that'll be in mid-February. But that'll do it for me, and I'll see you guys next time. Citizens Drive, signing off.